Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we will look at the temporal method, an illustration of that method, and translating the financial statement. This topic is covered in international accounting, advanced accounting course, CPA exam, as well as the ACCA exam. As always, if you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. I also have my channel, uh, a website for my channel, farhatlectures.com, where you could access additional information, resources, PowerPoint slides, quizzes, so on and so forth. If you are planning to study, uh, it's good to study with more than one individual. StudyPal.co will give you that option. It's an artificial intelligence driven study body platform. They have users in 85 countries and 2,500 cities. So what is helpful for this session? It's helpful if you know what the temporal method is and the current rate methods are and when to use the temporal method and when to use the current rate method. I have the links for those sessions in the description. Now to illustrate this concept, once again, we're going to be working. Now, the reason I say once again, because we already did the current rate method illustration, we're going to be using the same kind of the same type of data, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be the temporal method. So it's going to be a U.S. company that purchased an Italian subsidiary. So assume a U.S.-based company uh, purchased an Italian company on December 31st, year zero. On that date, the company invested 1,350,000 and they bought 100% of the stock of the Italian company. The exchange rate was one, $1.35 to a euro. Simply put, we invested 1 million euros in terms of euros. Immediately, we invested 600,000 in inventory and the remaining $400,000 was in cash. The Italian company began operation on January 1st with net asset of a million euros and net monetary asset position of 400,000. That means cash and receivable. So what's the net monetary position? Cash and receivable minus the current liabilities and debt. We have we only have 400,000 of cash. So basically, this is the net monetary position. This is the net asset. And we have inventories of 600,000. This is what we started with. Now, throughout the year, year one, the company purchased, the Italian company purchased property, plant and equipment. They acquired a patent and they purchased additional inventory primarily on account. They negotiated a five-year loan to help purchase the equipment. So they borrowed money for the equipment. Sales are made primarily on account and expenses were incurred. Income after taxes was 825 euros and dividend was 325,000 declared. Now, if you don't have this data, write it down. It's helpful. Any data that if you don't have the PowerPoint slides, which you can download from my website, you know, copy the data down. And this is the income statement for year one. So they have sales minus cost of goods sold gives them gross profit minus selling depreciation, amortization interest gives them income before taxes. They pay taxes and this is net income in euros. Retained earning, the beginning was zero plus net income, which is 825 plus net income minus the dividend gives them ending retained earning of half a million. This is what their balance sheet looks like. Cash receivable. This is their monetary net mon uh, monetary asset. Um, inventory at cost using FIFO. Property, plant, and equipment that they purchase using the loan. Um, pat patent of 80,000. Accounts payable. Long-term debt. Capital stock, the initial investment, retained earning from coming from the uh, coming from the uh, retained earning statement, and uh, total total liabilities and equity of three million eight hundred and thirty. Total assets equal to total liabilities and equity. Now I want to point out that their net asset position, net liability position, so they have one million uh, one million one hundred and ten thousand of of net monetary assets, cash and uh, uh, and receivable and they have liabilities of 330 plus 2 million so the difference between those two figures and this figure is the net monetary position would happen to be a liability exposure liability exposure and we'll see why that's important later this is the data about the foreign currency foreign currency uh, rates and this is important this is that's more important than the current uh, rate method because here we're going to be using many methods. So January 1st, this was the rate when we initially invested in the company. When we bought the property, plant and equipment, this was the rate. When we bought the patent, this was the rate. The average for the year was this much. 
rate one dividend declare was this much average for the month of December this much in December 31st year one at the end of the year 125 so notice again the same as in the prior example we gave the example where the euro is declining and the reason is to make a point just to kind of hopefully you can see the point okay so this is the data if you don't have go to my website otherwise copy it down Remeasurement of financial statement the temporal method now let's assume just uh, that the euro that the euro financial statement will be measured into us dollar using the temporal method now if if you if you are if you're saying why again go why when do we use the temporal method when do we use the current rate method and the remeasurement gain or loss will be reported in net income and you're going to see how this work now remember in the prior method the a translation adjustment was in the balance sheet now it's going to be in the it's going to be an in income so it's going to be interesting to see the difference compare and contrast so to ensure that the remeasurement gain or loss is reported in that income we're going to start by remeasuring the balance sheet so when you use the temporal method the first thing you do is you remeasure the balance sheet so let's remeasure the balance sheet work well we're, first we're going to start with cash or monetary asset monetary assets they are translated at the current exchange rate 125 account receivable at the current exchange rate 125 so this is how we're getting these figures now inventory will be will be translated using the historical rate then we're going to get total current assets property plant and equipment they're going to be translated on the date that they were purchased when we purchased property plant and equipment the rate was 133 same thing with accumulated depreciation because it's related to that the patent the rate was 132 when we purchased it therefore total asset is four million nine hundred forty five thousand one hundred dollar liabilities which are the financial uh, monetary assets um, liabilities are uh, yes li liabilities they are basically monetary monetary liabilities they are translated at the current rate just like cash and receivable liabilities again at the current rate just like cash and receivable we're going to get to total liabilities now we have assets and we have liabilities what can we find if we have assets and with liabilities we have equity so what's going to happen from equity we know one part of equity is common stock and we know common stock is 1,350,000 okay because it's translated at the historical rate then now we know that the total equity that the total equity should be four million nine hundred forty four million nine hundred forty five thousand one hundred dollar because liabilities and equity should equal to the assets now we have everything except retained earnings what does that mean it means retained earnings is going to be a plug now how do you find retained earnings well we said uh, first more than one way well if you say the difference between assets if we take four million nine hundred forty five thousand one hundred minus liabilities liabilities are two million nine hundred twelve thousand five hundred let's find out how much is equity just give me one moment please I'm gonna do this computation then we're gonna back into retained earnings okay and this is important so first we're going to prepare the balance sheet to find the retained earnings so we have four million nine hundred forty five thousand one hundred minus two million nine hundred twelve thousand five hundred so equity should be two million thirty two thousand six hundred two million thirty two thousand 600 now we know we have 1 million 350 in equity so if we subtract 1 million 350 that's what's going to keep us with 600 600 so this must be the plug 600 600 so this is the plug to balance so and so basically we completed everything and we plug this figure to balance which is 682 600 which is retained earnings so retained earning is the plug here now this is important you're going to see how we're going to be using retained earning to find the um, adjustment for gain or loss now remember on the balance sheet cash receivable and liabilities are measured at the current rate those are the monetary assets and liabilities inventory carried at cost 
property plan equipment are carried at historical rate whatever whenever that transaction occur this procedure this procedure resulted in four million nine hundred forty five thousand one hundred in assets and liabilities and capital stock of four million two hundred sixty two five hundred the plug was retained earnings so this is just basically a um, a summary of what I just did and this is going to help us compute the remeasurement the remeasurement gain so let's take a look now on the income statement this is the income statement that we are given this is the income statement let's take a look at it and see what happened sales are assumed to be occurring throughout the year we use the average cost of goods sold here we have to do a little bit more of work cost of goods sold we're going to take beginning inventory multiplied by the beginning rate so beginning inventory multiplied by the beginning rate 810 purchases we're going to assume they they were they occurred throughout the year therefore we use the average rate purchases 620 times the average rate 8 million 60 thousand and ending inventory we're going to be using the average in december we assume we bought them throughout december we have 800 thousand times one two six so beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory gives us cost of goods sold of seven million of seven million eight hundred and sixty two thousand so the cost of goods sold it, it, there's three components and each component is use a different rate but 782 is the 782 is the answer so let's go ahead and use 782 7 seven million eight hundred and sixty two thousand okay so sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit minus selling which is the average minus depreciation expense we use historical rate because we when, when we bought them we use historical rate same thing with amortization when we bought the patent the interest is the average rate then the income tax is the average okay so pretty much we accounted for everything we stop now we stop now we know retained earning is zero for this example we know ending retained earning is 682 682 600 which which this was a plug you remember plug in the from the balance sheet we also know that dividend was 352 translated at at 127 that's going to give us dividend in us dollar 412 750. so now we're going to have to find out net income so net income now is the plug so how much is net income so basically what number do we need so what's zero plus what number minus 412 750 equal to 682 600 so simply put zero plus x minus 412 750 it's going to give us 682 600 the x is net income so let's see what that figure is net income is 1 million nine hundred one million ninety five thousand three fifty this is what net income should be so simply put net income should be one million nine one million ninety five thousand three fifty well what does that mean it means you have to go through this through the whole computation take sales minus cost of goods sold gives you gross profit gross profit minus selling minus depreciation minus amortization minus interest expense minus uh minus minus income taxes and that should give us one million ninety five thousand three fifty so let's see what this will give us if we went through this computation so now we're going to be back and into this remeasurement gain so we have sales of ten million four hundred thousand minus cost of goods sold of seven hundred seven million eight hundred sixty two thousand that gives us gross profit of two million three fifty minus six fifty what that six fifty selling and administrative minus six fifty minus two sixty six depreciation minus 26 400 amortization minus interest of 234 minus taxes of 357 500 and now we came up to 1 million four hundred uh one million uh four thousand one hundred dollar well the answer should be one million ninety five thousand three fifty two okay so what's the difference between one million four thousand one hundred and one million ninety five thousand three fifty i hope i did i didn't miss anything so the remeasurement plug should be ninety ninety one thousand two fifty so the answer should be ninety ninety one thousand 
250. So simply put, we have to add a gain, okay, of 91,250. Now, why it's a gain, we're going to see why, but this it's a plug. So basically, this is the plug. So first, so first we find net income as a first we find retained earning as a plug. From retained earning, we're going to find net income. From net income, we'll find the plug on the income statement whether it's supposed to be gain or a gain or a loss. Now, what happened when we did all of this? When we took sales minus all the known numbers, what we find out is we took too much. We have to kind of add ninety one thousand two fifty, and this will be a remeasurement gain. A remeasurement gain. Why is it a remeasurement gain? We're going to see why we have a gain. Why it, why, it, why, it, why it happens to be a gain. Now, in the prior example, remember, we had a loss because we had a net asset uh, exposure. Let's see what happened in this example. So we have a gain. So this is the mechanics of it. Let's review real quick. Revenues and expenses occurred evenly. That's why you use the average rate. Same as selling administrative interests and income taxes. Expenses related to historical exchange rates, such as depreciation and amortization, are themselves measured at historical rate. So we, we talked about this. Now, retained earning. The ending balance and retained earning on the balance sheet and in this in the statement of retained earning must reconcile with one another. So balance so first we found the balance sheet and it should be the same in retained earning. Given dividend are measured in US dollar of equivalent of 412,750 and the ending balance and retained earnings should be 682 and this is how we found net income. In order for the amount of net income reported in the income statement and the in the in the statement of retained earning and the income statement to reconcile with one another, we had to plug again a remeasurement gain of 912,250. Okay. Without this remeasurement gain, the income statement, statement of retained earning, and the balance sheet will not be consistent with each other. So remember, first we found retained earnings. It was a plug. From retained earning, we find out what net income should be. Uh, well, then from that income, we had to make an adjustment. We had to make a remeasurement gain or remeasurement loss sometimes. But this is how we went through this. So this is how you how you do this using the temporal method. Now, is there an alternative method to compute the remeasurement gain? Well, there is one. I'm going to go over it, although I don't, you know, um, just try to get the most out of it. But let me show you how it works. Remeasurement gain or loss for that matter, which is the remeasurement, Calculate by considering the impact of the exchange rate changes on the subsidiary's balance sheet exposure. What are we talking about here? Under the temporal method, the Italian, the Italian company balance sheet exposure is defined by its net monetary asset or net monetary position. Now, what is net monetary asset, net monetary position? Net monetary asset is cash and receivable, not monetary liabilities is if it, if you have more liabilities, current liabilities than cash and receivable. So the Italian company started with a not monetary asset. We had everything in cash, 400,000. Then throughout the year, expenditure for cash and incurrence of liabilities caused monetary liabilities, accounts payable and long-term debt of 2,330. And those exceeded the cash and the receivable, which were 1,150. So overall, we had a net monetary liability position. So in this example, in this example, we had a net monetary liability position because we had more liabilities than cash and receivable. So overall, we had a not net monetary liability position at December 31st. So now what we can do, the remeasurement gain is computed by translating the beginning net monetary asset position and subsequent changes in monetary items at appropriate exchanges, and then comparing this with the US dollar value of not net monetary liability at year end based on the current exchange. Huh? Well, let's take a look at how we do this. So what's going to happen? We're going to start with our net monetary asset 1-1 one, one, year 1, which was only cash of 400,000 multiplied by the rate at that time 135, that's 540,000. Sales of 800,000 translated at the average, that's 10,400,000. Simply put, our net monetary asset simply went up. Then we purchase inventory of 6.2 6 million. That's going to be translated at the average rate. Our net monetary asset went down 8,060,000. Selling expenses also translated at the average rate. Payment of interest at the average rate. Uh, income taxes at the average rate. Uh, property, plant, and equipment, that's translated at the historical rate at that point. Dividend, uh, patent at the historical rate, and dividend at the historical rate. So here's what's going to happen. Overall, we have a net monetary liability. We have not monetary liability. Okay, net monetary liabilities because we have more liabilities than, 
than uh, than cash and receivables. Now, if we look at that US dollar, this is the position in US dollar. If we take the net monetary liabilities and we translate it at the current rate, it should which should give us one million four hundred and seventy five. But our net monetary position is one million five hundred sixty six. Simply put, simply put, because we have a lot of liabilities. Okay, we have more liabilities than asset, and the currency went down in value. Is this good for us or bad? This is good. For the parent company, it's good. If we have liabilities in a foreign currency, and that foreign currency weakened, which will happen in the euro here, so US company, US company would say, that's good. We have a gain. Why do we have a gain? Because we have liabilities in a foreign currency, but that foreign currency... Uh, value went down therefore it's easier for us our local currency the US dollar will be able to to buy to, to buy more euros to cover the liabilities therefore we have a remeasurement gain and that's why we have a remeasurement gain in this example of 91,250 so this example was designed that you have a net monetary liabilities you have more liabilities than a monetary assets by 1 million 180 and as a result, if you want to pay that liability at the current rate at 125, you are only responsible for 1,475,000. But on the balance sheet, you're reporting 1,566,000. Well, you have a remeasurement gain on the income statement. On the income, income statement, you would say you would, this gain would reflect if you happen to pay the liabilities today at the current rate, which you'll only have to pay that much. It means you have a gain. And the opposite would have been true if you had to pay more okay if this answer if the rate was different if the rate was different if the rate was 1.4 this will be more then you'll have to pay more you this will be a loss okay um so let's just kind of to illustrate what we're talking about here hopefully this makes sense if the italian company has maintained its cash position of 400,000 for the entire year, then they will have a remeasurement loss of 40,000. Now you might be saying why? Well, think about it. The euro amount held in cash was worth 540,000 at the beginning of the year, which is 400,000 times 1.35. At the end of the year, that cash is only worth half a million because they still have assuming $400,000 in cash times 1.25. I'm just showing you how did we do this. Now bear in mind in this example, the net monetary asset is not maintained. We had, an, at the end, we had a net monetary liability. Okay, we had a net monetary liability, and the depreciation of the foreign currency. What happened to the currency? Because we have a liability, and the foreign currency went down. That was good for us, coupled with an increase in net monetary liabilities. So that helped us have a, re, a gain remeasurement. A gain remeasurement. Simply put, remeasurement gain of ninety one thousand. 250 and we computed this but I just want, to, want you to understand if you get a multiple choice question should I have a remeasurement gain or a remeasurement loss well what's my exposure is my exposure liabilities if the answer is yes that the foreign currency went down in value if the answer is yes great I want this well the opposite would be true if the currency went down and you have a net asset position then you you would have a remeasurement loss okay if you have any questions, any comments about this session, email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider subscribing. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.